Welcome to this beginner's tutorial on the colour section in DaVinci Resolve. In this tutorial I won't be going through everything, but will cover what I believe to be the fundamentals, that of using the colour wheels and curves. For me these are the bedrocks of Resolve, and once you have an appreciation of these, you will be well on your way to learning colour grading. This is a longer tutorial than normal, as I originally planned it as two videos. However, I feel having everything in one summary version is useful, something I feel other tutorials have missed. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> We're first of all going to talk about the colour wheels section. To get to this, we click on the colour icon as highlighted, and then we click on the colour wheels icon as highlighted. We're then presented with four wheels. Each of these colour wheels affects the colour within a specific range of the image, apart from the offset which affects the colour across all of the image. The lift acts on the darkest parts of the image, the shadows, the gamma acts on the midtones, and the gain acts on the highlights. So in our example here, if we change the lift, we can see that's acting on the darkest part of the image, which is her hair. If we go to the gamma, we can see that's mainly acting on her skin, the midtones. And if we go to the gain, you can see it's mainly acting on the white in the background, the lightest part of the image. And then the offset is having a global effect across the image. One other thing we need to mention are the wheels at the bottom of the main colour wheels. These affect the brightness of the colour ranges. Let's have a look at the other modes of working we have in this section. So here we have our primary bars. This is exactly the same as the colour wheels on the other page, but it just allows more precise adjustments across the luminance, red, green and blue. And finally, we have the log mode of working. Log is different to primaries as it allows much finer control. Let me show you. If I push the highlights quite a long way to the right, and then grab a still of that image, and then go back to primaries and do the same thing with the highlights we can see the difference there in the two stills so log allows for much finer control and primaries allow for much broader control Let's now have a look at the bottom options, which are broadly the same for primaries and log, with a few differences which I'll go over. The first thing we come to is the contrast. This simply affects the difference between the lightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image, and the pivot point is where that effect originates from. Normally the pivot point is in the middle range of the image, However, if we push it high, the whole image will start to be considered more as shadows. And if we place it low, the image will start to be considered more as highlights. Next we come to saturation. This is simply the intensity of the colour. Look how the image changes when we increase the saturation, and then gradually decrease it until we get a black and white image. Next we come on to hue, this is pretty self explanatory, it just circles through the colour spectrum. 
Next we have Luma Mix. This can be a little hard to understand. So let's bring up our scopes. And I think we'll go to the bars. Now, say if we just adjust the green channel here. Notice as we adjust that, uh, the other two channels are also adjusting as well. The reason for that is they're adjusting to preserve the luminosity. When we have that value set to 100, now note we've set it to 0, and now we'll move the green channel, and you see the green channel will completely move on its own now, and the other two channels are locked in place. Let's now go back to the primary wheels and select panel 2. And you'll note there we've now got more options. So the first one is temperature. This just affects how warm or cool the image is. If we say it's cool, it's got more blues. Or if it's hot, it's got more reds. The next option is tint. This is a colour balance correction, which allows adjustments of the image along a magenta to green axis. This would be useful, say, if you want to correct unnatural fluorescent light. But in our case, our image does not suffer from that problem. Next, we have the midtone detail. This will act to either sharpen or smooth out the midtones. Look what happens to her skin when we adjust the midtone detail. If we smooth out the image, that can be useful for skin blemishes or something like that that we want to hide. But we have to be careful because otherwise the skin can look rather plastic. Next we have colour boost, which shouldn't be confused with saturation. Both colour boost and saturation affect the whole range of the image. But colour boost tries to target the less saturated parts more. In effect, it compresses the range of saturation when increasing its value and expands it when decreasing the value. Next, we have shadows, which is quite self-explanatory. This lets you lighten or darken the shadow area, as you can see in the model's hair. And then highlights does exactly the same thing, but obviously acting on the highlights. I now want to show you a specific setting in Log. You can see here we've got the low range and we've got the high range. Let me show you a graph to explain these. You can see the top graph, that relates to the primaries. And the bottom graph relates to the Log. If you remember what we said about the primaries, this has a much broader range of selection. And you can see how the overlap between lift, gamma and gain is much greater for the primary than for the lock. If you think back to the two snapshots that we took of the model, you can now appreciate why the difference was so stark. But what's good about the log is it gives us quite a lot of flexibility. We can alter this low range or high range so that we broaden or we narrow the overlap. Now that we have an understanding of the wheels palette, I would like to introduce curves, as these allow control over similar effects as wheels, but in some way curves are more powerful, such as when pinpointing an effect. You will see what I mean in a minute. So to access curves, we press the icon which I've highlighted by a red box. We can see we're then presented with a diagonal line. At the bottom, that line represents the shadows. You can see how it's affecting her hair. And then at the top, the highlights. You see how it's affecting the lightest parts of the image. And then the middle is the midtones. You see how that's affecting the midtones, like her skin. If we go over to the left here and we grab these handles, we can actually change the whole output. So we can squish everything between these two lines. Let's return to one of the main benefits of curves. That of pinpointing select areas. 
say if we want to pinpoint this model's hair, but we don't know exactly where it would fall on the line. It's really easy. We just hover over the image and then we can see the eyedropper tool and we simply click on the area that we want to select and you can see it's created a point on the curve. We could then manipulate the point and bring it down but the problem is the effect is being applied in a linear way so it is affecting a much broader area. One way of overcoming this would be to set a placeholder. So in our case, let's select the next darkest area of the image, such as this area of the model's skin. You will now see another point has been added on the line to act as our placeholder. We can now manipulate our original point, and we see that the effect has now been confined to our desired region. One thing I need to make you aware of with the curves is it looks like it's just one value. However, if we press this link button, we can see the curve is actually comprised of a number of values. The Y or Luma, the red, the green and the blue. And you can see we actually can manipulate those individually. And then if we press the link button again, that condenses them all into one. That's basically an overview of the general curves. But in addition to this, I'd like to give a brief rundown on the specific curves, which are accessed by the drop down menu here. These curves are hue v hue, hue v saturation, hue v luma, luma v saturation, and saturation v saturation. So let's take a look at hue v hue. In hue v hue, we simply select the colour we want to modify. We can do this from one of the presets shown in the box below, or we can use the eyedropper tool. So say if we want to change the colour of this yellow balloon, we simply click on it, and you can see a point has been added on the colour scale to show us where that colour lies. We can then manipulate that point to change the colour of the balloon. It's as simple as that. Let's now have a look at hue v saturation. This is used for changing the saturation of a given hue. So again, if we use our balloon as an example, if we click on it, we see a point has been added, and then we can manipulate that point to change the saturation of the balloon. So we can increase the saturation, or we can totally desaturate it. What's also cool about this is we could bring everything else down in the image so that the only thing left is the yellow balloon. And we can actually move these points out to widen the selection. I think that looks pretty cool. Now let's look at hue v luma. This affects the brightness of the colour we select. So using our balloon as an example again, let's click on the balloon and note the point it created. We can then manipulate that point to increase or decrease the brightness. Just a word of caution with this, at either end of the scale you can see things start breaking down and it starts to look weird. So I'd use this quite subtly. Let's now have a look at Luma v Saturation. This allows us to target a portion of the image based on its brightness and affect its saturation. The scale represents the darkest ranges on the left to the lightest ranges on the right. If we return to the theme of balloons, we can see these two balloons, the hue is quite similar, but the brightness is different. So if we click on the balloon on the left, we can see a point has been made and we can manipulate that point, thus affecting its saturation based on the brightness. Note the effect on the balloon on the right is relatively minimal. Lastly, let's have a look at saturation v saturation. 
This allows us to select a colour range depending on how saturated it is and change its saturation. On the left of the scale we have colours that are the least saturated and on the right the most. So if we click the grass we can see that's nearer the least saturated end of the scale. Whereas if we click the red top that's nearer the most saturated end of the scale. In my opinion I find the red tops a bit garish in this image and I find the grass a bit dull. So let's make a correction. If we pull this point up we increase the saturation of the grass and on the right if we pull the point down we gradually decrease the saturation of the tops. I think that looks a bit better. I think that's probably a good place to end. I hope you learnt something from this tutorial and if you have any comments or questions please leave them below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.